Hi fellow video enthusiasts, I'm Harv and you're watching Harv Video Audio Stuff. Have you ever wondered about how you can use vector scopes to get the best looking skin tones in your video? Well, that's exactly what we're gonna do in this video. If you do enjoy this content, be sure to drop a like and subscribe. That's the best way to support this channel. Let's do it. When you pull up the vector scope in your software, this is what you're gonna see. And it's basically just a way of displaying all the different colors and levels of saturation in your footage. You wouldn't use this to make exposure adjustments to your footage. For that, obviously, you'd probably want to stick with something like waveforms. What makes it special is this diagonal line, which is basically a guide for good looking skin tones. Before we dive in, there are some things to remember about vectors. I've seen comments in the past where people absolutely swear by them. Personally, I'd say don't rely on them 100% because everyone has different skin tones and a little line on your vector scope in your editing software doesn't necessarily know best. You know what the subject's skin actually looks like because you filmed the scene. So use your judgment. So let's use this clip as our example. As you can see, it's shot in Canon Log and let's bring it into Final Cut and work on the skin tones. I've imported the clip and as you can see, I've added color wheels and a custom lookup table. I haven't done anything to them yet. So let's do a really quick grade now. Let's bring the exposure down. As you can see, it's really brightly exposed. And then I'm gonna add my favorite lookup table at the moment, which is the Phantom Array lookup tables. Check the description below if you're interested in them. You can use the code HARV at checkout to get a discount. You are welcome. Next, I'm going to open our video scopes and switch to vector scopes. And this is what you're gonna see usually. You can see that diagonal line, and that is apparently the line of skin tones. Next, I want to isolate the area of our subject's face, and I'm going to add a shape mask and then move it over her face. I wanna be careful not to get any of the hair around her face. I just want her features. When we look at the vector scope here, you can see the line actually does match that diagonal line pretty well, and that's because our subject has very typical skin tone color according to the vector scopes. Using our color wheels, you can see when I move the mid-tones to the more purpley side and then to the green, you can see how this affects that line on our vector scopes. How far the line protrudes towards the outside is an indication of the saturation or the amount of that color. Let's manipulate those mid-tones and line up our subject skin tones to the line on our vector scopes and see if they're better or worse. And here you can see the before and after, the one where we've aligned the skin tones to the vector scope. Uh, they look a little bit more yellowy. Personally, I prefer that sort of natural, slightly more pinky skin tone on the left. But what do you think? Another thing to bear in mind is you don't always want to prioritize perfect and accurate looking skin tones. Often the look and feel of the grade will be more important. There are countless examples of films where this is the case. I'd say a great and probably the most obvious example is The Matrix with its kind of green tint. Just look at what this does to the vector scope. I'm gonna use this screenshot of Neo from the first film as our example. Let's get it into Final Cut. I've imported the photo into Final Cut and for our shape mask, I focused on Neo's forehead only because I don't want to have his shades in the shot as well. And looking at the vector scope, you can see the line is way, way over to the green. Not really a surprise to be honest. So what I've done is I've tried to unmatrix grade the matrix by adding in a load of purple to the midtones and just look what it's done to the image. Here's the before and after. Can you imagine if this is what the matrix looked like? Don't get me wrong, it'd still be a cool film, but Anyway, let's just do one more quick example with Trinity here, this super cool wide angle shot. As I couldn't see much of her face in this one, I thought the best idea would be to get a shape mask of her arm as that's the biggest area of skin that we can see. Again, the vector scope line isn't happy at all. And as you can see, I've done a similar thing to before. I've added some purpley tones to the mid tones. And in this example, I'd say it's not that easy to undo this because there's a lot of similar colors all around the shot. And that's that, the matrix unmatrix color graded, sort of. I'm a pretty pasty Brit, so let's see what a vector scope makes of my skin tone. Let's take a photo right now. And then let's drop it into Lightroom, set the white balance to auto, and then set the rest of the editing also to auto so it looks fairly natural. 
Then let's bring it back into Final Cut. Here we are in Final Cut and we've got our photo, check. We've got our vector scope, check. We just need our shape mask. I'm gonna position it exactly as before. Unfortunately, obviously I have facial hair can't be avoided, I'm just gonna go with it. Looking at the vector scope, it's saying I have imperfect skin tones. What's perfect? Exactly, there's no such thing. And here's the rub. If I go in and change the midtones, so it's apparently giving me the right color skin tones, look what it does. I don't think they're as good as they were before. Please ignore the green shadows. I am essentially editing a JPEG, so this is not ideal, I know. But looking at them side by side, my skin tones are I can tell you from experience of my own skin tones, they're way more like the before than the after. So Vectorscopes, do you love them, hate them, do you swear by them? Let me know how you use them in the comments section below. Obviously in this video I didn't cover anything like masking, that kind of thing. So yeah, leave it. And that's it for now, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, definitely do it, I'd love it if you could. Just hit the blob on this side and I've got a large back catalogue of videos about videography on this channel, of which YouTube recommends this one for you and the one underneath is my latest upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot a better video. See you guys.